You have no right to be ordinary. God has called you to be extraordinary.
is faithful, he is faithful. Amen. This morning we worship him with hearts of gratitude, for he cannot fail. Let's sing this together. I am holding on to faith. Cause I know you'll make a way. I don't always understand. I don't always get to see, but I will believe it. I will believe it. You make mountains move. You make giants fall. You use songs of praise. Lift it up to say, I've seen you do it before. I will speak to my fear, and I will preach to my doubt. If you were faithful then, you'll be faithful now. Yeah, I know it's true. Yeah, I'm still faithful today. I am standing on your word, calling heaven down.
pray together. Father, today we do thank you for how awesome you are, how great you are, how good you are, how kind you are, how gracious you are, God. We do not deserve your mercy. We do not deserve your love. But God, we are so grateful that you give it and that you give it willingly and that you give it in abundance. God, we thank you for the passages of Scripture that tell us that with you all things are possible. We thank you, God, that you've told us that even going beyond what we could ever desire from you, God, that you do abundantly more, and we are so grateful. God, we are so grateful for the gift of your son, Jesus. The fact that he came, that he died on the cross for our sins and rose again three days later so that we, by believing in him, that we can have life, that we can have forgiveness, that we can have eternity with you. God, we're grateful for it. And so now today, Lord, as we've lifted our hearts and our voices in worship, now as we lift our, our hearts in worship through your word, God, I pray that you would encourage us and strengthen us and grow us, lead us to what you want us to be. And God, for that, we'll give you the praise, we'll give you the glory, and all that you are going to do in this moment, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, go ahead and have a seat, guys. You had the opportunity a few moments ago to... Uh, uh, here from the women's basketball team, of course, the men's basketball team, they, they squeaked by last night by about, what, 40 points, I think it is. So we had an incredible seasons by both teams going right now, excited about all that they're doing. And uh, also want to introduce to you today, they're here, they're all together, which we're thrilled about, another team that we kind of celebrate around here, and that is our three-time bowl-winning football team here at Liberty University right over here. Guys, go ahead and stand if you would. All of our football team, go ahead and stand. Great to have you guys here. And we are excited today uh, to be able to hear from their coach. Our coach, Hugh Freeze, is going to be sharing with us in just a moment. But before he does that, I want to remind you about the opportunities that you all have to get involved and to serve and to make a difference and so if you've not already found a place for your uh, Christian service for this spring, uh, the C-Serve opportunities that are available are going to be over in the Montview building, the first floor today and tomorrow. You can go by, talk to a lot of different organizations that will be there uh, to connect with you. If you've not found a spot that really fits you, I encourage you to go by, spend some time talking with them and find the right spot for you. So listen, today we are going to hear from Hugh Freeze. You know, he's been our coach from, since 2018. Uh, 26 and 11 is his schedule so far, or his record so far here at Liberty. We're looking for that first number to continue to go up by big numbers. We're excited to have him here. He just signed a, an extension, a five-year extension here at Liberty. He's not going anywhere. He is a Liberty flame and will be for a long time. His family's gathered with us today, which we're thrilled about. But hey, let's join together and welcome Hugh Freeze to the Convo stage. Hey, can we do that a little louder? Come on, you. Come on, a little louder. <laughs> so it, it's an honor to be with you. Listen, we, uh, we have Convo in our, uh, in our football offices uh, every Monday, Thursday, and, uh, and Friday evenings. I do Monday and Thursdays. Uh, Pastor Gomes does Friday. And um, I'm just going to share with you today, um, as quick as I can, just some of the high points of our Convos throughout the season and the points that, uh, that I taught to our team. Let me say first to, to our football team and our staff, they are my family. Um, we, we, we are imperfect and, and all the things that, that come with life, and, but they are my people. They are my guys. They, they are the ones that I do life with. And we just want to say on behalf of our family to you guys, thank you. You, you provide for us one of the best atmospheres to play in every Saturday. So we applaud you. So guys, give them a hand. You guys are incredible. And we want to continue, we want to continue to make this one of the most difficult places to play. And, uh, and I know all the other teams feel the same. Basketball, softball, baseball, on and on, field hockey, lacrosse, all of the teams, volleyball. So we need you to be part of that. So thank you for doing that. So what day of your life, when measured, would rank near the top? What day? Uh, there you go. I don't know what he said, but I heard somebody. 
He said, it's birthday. When is your birthday? Everybody, everybody remember his birthday. But that's, that's a great answer. So if we take out, if we take out the, uh, the salvation day, if we take that out, obviously that is one of the greatest days. I'll never forget where I was. I was in my grandmother's and my nanny and papa's house, and I was, I was nervous. You know what guys do when we get nervous? You know, we, we get fidgety. And, and I, I remember vividly she had uh, on, on this little hallway this washer and this dryer, and I would put my hands on it, and I would rock back and forth because I didn't, wasn't quite sure how to tell them what, what I was really feeling, what I was wanting to do in, in accepting Jesus. So obviously that is, that is the pinnacle. But what day, when measured in your life, would rank near the top? Charles Billingsley, do you have an answer? I think probably the day I was uh, called into ministry when wow. I was in seventh grade. Good one. You remember where you were that day? I was. I was in a youth conference in uh, right outside of Seattle, Washington. Yeah. Some, somebody down here, what day when measured in your life would have to rank near the top? Somebody, come on. Right here. Outside, outside uh, of the day you accepted uh, Christ, do you have oh, another day? Uh, the day my brother accepted Christ. There you go. <laughs> hey, hey Will Center, it's always about Jesus, right? So, all right, there was one up here. I think it was JB or somebody. Logan, first to graduate college in his family. I remember that, yeah. That's, that's a great day. So all of us, as we think about the, the, these moments that, uh, that create these, these memories of, man, that was a great day. That was a really good, good day. I, I, you know, so I, I taught this year from 2 Samuel 23 about David's mighty men to our team. And so I just want to share with you, let me, let me tell you a great day in this guy's life, okay? There's a verse that's going to come up on the screen from 2 Samuel 23. Now, 2 Samuel 23, you've got to know, David, I'm going to give you the quick version. David's been anointed king, right? He's been anointed to be king. He selects these, these 30 some odd, 37 warriors to their mighty men, the, these mighty dudes to do life with him. And I'm quite certain that before they said yes, that they considered the cost. Man, let me weigh exactly what could be. No way they could know everything that's coming, but they certainly had some idea of the landscape of things right now and what this would cost. And so let me tell you about a great day. This guy, when measured against the rest of the days of his life, this has to be a great day. One of the mighty warriors, say it with me, Benaiah, he was the son of Jehodai. A valiant fighter from Kabzeel, he performed great exploits. He struck down Moab's two mightiest warriors. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. Now, how many of you think that ranks up there? I mean, that's pretty. So we forget that these are real people just like us. They're doing life. Now, why in the world, why in the world would he be so crazy to chase a lion into a pit on a snowy day. I've always asked myself when I see these things and these stories in the Bible, man, why in the world would he do that? And I want to suggest to you today that he did that because of what he witnessed his leader do. Man, he had heard the stories of God's faithfulness to this man named David, how David would kill a lion, how David would kill a bear. He had heard those stories, and in his mind, somewhere he had, he had just believed in his heart that, man, if God would be faithful to David, then he will be faithful to me. And it gave him the confidence and the courage to not wander into a pit or accidentally fall into the pit, but to chase the lion into the pit and to kill it. I would ask you, like I asked our football team when we did this week, this was a week and I'm doing it in five minutes for you, but I would ask you, who are you following? Who are you, who's leading you? We talk about in our, in our team room all the time that we're built different. We're built different at Liberty. And I, I always ask them, are we? Are we really? 
then who are we following? Who are we getting our confidence from and in? Is it, is it Twitter? Is it, uh, is it InstaLife? Is it uh, the, the TikToks and, and all of those, those different things? Is that what we really want to follow? Or are we really going to be built different at Liberty University? And so who are you following? Oh, the easy answer is, man, I follow Christ. Well, that's great. That is the ultimate follow. That's what, who you should. But it also matters who you're around. And it also matters how hungry they are to be built different and to do different. Are they willing to chase lines into a pit on a snowy day knowing that God has been faithful before and he'll be faithful again? And so I would ask you, who are you following? Who's leading you? Second thing I noticed about, uh, about Benaiah here is he grabbed opportunity by the mane. Look, sometimes opportunities come and man, we must grab them. And I will remind you of the story he heard of David. He heard of this story of David when he took this peanut butter and jelly sandwich up to his brothers uh, to, at, at, at they were at battle. And he took, everybody likes peanut butter and jelly, right, Ed? Amen. Everybody, so he's taking, this, he's taking this sandwich up to his brothers, and, and he's, he's, he's not going there with any other mission other than his father told him to take them some food. And he takes them some food, and on his way up the hill, he hears this, this guy taunting him. He not only delivers the food, but he says, and this is in coaches' terms, this is not the Bible, but I mean, it's, it's based in the Bible, but it's just coaches' terms. But David in his mind said, I tell you what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to listen to this all day. And he took opportunity and did something about it. In the same way, Benaiah had heard the story of David doing that, and he grabbed opportunity by the main. I want to say to you, man, be careful of God's one encounters also. Those one encounters. Do you know one of the reasons I stand here blessed to be the Liberty football coach? Everybody know who Chris Tomlin is? Every, yeah, yeah. Everybody remember David Nasser? Okay. All right, so they have this one encounter meeting with my best friend at the time, Chad Spencer, in New York City at Chris Tomlin's concert a New Year's concert, and, and they're sitting backstage, and Nasser says, somehow my name comes up, and Nasser says, man, I'd like to meet that guy. And Tomlin and Spencer say, well, man, we know him well. We can make that happen. And so these are these one encounters, and it led to a meeting the next week with Nasser. Then Jill and I come in to speak at Convo. Then one thing to another to be the head football coach. Man, God is amazing how he works things out. And I want you to look around right now. There's some one encounters that you're having, like Benaiah had with this man called David, and he chose to follow him, and he got to hear the stories of David. There, God has set you up for, for some type of one encounters, man, if we just acknowledge them. There's some one encounters in our team room, and when they shared this week on the, on the one encounters that we have that are life-changing and life-altering, that just made me just thank God for his goodness to us. Always be aware of those one encounters. Lion chasers are much more afraid of missing an opportunity than mistakes or failures. I want you to hear that. Man, lion chasers, they're... They're, they're much more concerned about missing an opportunity than they are failing or making a mistake. So, one, who's leading you? Find a leader worth following. And two, grab opportunity by the main. Man, how many of you ever feel blessed to have the opportunity to be at Liberty University? Truthfully, we can be stole, we, we can steal, the, the enemy can steal that blessing from us. And we forget how lucky we are to have this place that we have where we're free to talk about Jesus, where we're free to, to get an education, where we're free and have health to play the game we love. Man, there's so many blessings we have. Imperfect, yes, but blessed, absolutely. Thirdly, no conflict, no story. There's a verse, no conflict, no story. In 2 Samuel 23, in the cave of Abdullam. It's coming up at some point. In the cave of Adullam. Now, there it is, surrounded by a Philistine army. How many of you think that those 37 warriors, we signed up for this, right? But I guarantee you if it was me and a couple of our guys and, and we signed up, why did we sign up? We signed up because David was anointed to be 
king. Well, if you're anointed to be king, we're going to the palace, right? Well, this verse happens just 15 years since he's been anointed king. And I chose to follow this guy, and I had no idea that I was going to be sleeping in a cave and have enemies surrounding me, and I had to go fight to get water for my king. I had no clue that that was going to happen. And I want to just tell you, epic movies, the movies you really like to see, they have some type of epic conflict in it. And then we overcome the conflict. It's the same way with a football season. Man, we have never gone through a season where we didn't have conflict. We've never gone through a season where we didn't have some type of adversity hit us. And the same thing will be true for you in life. The same thing that was true for these 37 warriors, man, they got hit smack dab in the face with the reality is, man, this is not what I signed up for. Remind me your name? Boy, you can sing, JJ. You can sing, JJ. All you guys, I mean, uh, how blessed are we to have this collective, man? Uh, that, that, they're incredible. Every, every time I hear them, JJ, real life, right? Here's real life. You and I signed up with David. We signed up because he's anointed king. I kind of like being around that, don't you? I mean, that kind of excites me. I mean, we're going to the palace, right? <laughs> About that fourth month that we've slept on that hard rock in that cave, me and you are going to be in that corner saying, dude, I didn't sign up for this, did you? That's real, real talk. I mean, we're, I, I don't know that I quite signed up for this, man. I'm eating nothing, sleeping on these rocks. I thought we was going to the palace. And here we are having to fight for our lives. We got, we're surrounded by these armies. I got to go out there and fight them now. So rubber hits the road. These guys never flinched. Matter of fact, there's some great stories. Go read how one guy held up a sword and killed 800 people, and he held it until it was frozen to his hand. That was a great week we experienced. But, man, how about you when life hits you smack dab and you have conflict, heartache? Whether you caused it, whether you didn't, it's all real. What do we do in those moments? I was at Arkansas State coaching. I was the offensive coordinator. We broke all the school records in offense, man. My first year as offensive coordinator there. We got through with the season. It was not a great season in the win-loss total. And I, <clears throat> the first day after the season, I have to speak in Little Rock to the, one of the biggest touchdown clubs in the South, really, at Little Rock. And, man, I go in there, and I'm speaking to them. And the whole time I'm speaking, I had my phone in my back pocket, and it was just bzz, bzz. Just, I could feel it buzzing the whole time. And it was almost like it was really surreal, weird, because I'm talking and everybody in the audience is murmuring. And I had no clue. I felt like, man, what are they doing? They're not listening to me. They're not, I mean, it's, it's really odd. And as soon as I get off stage, they pull me aside and say, Coach, I don't know if you heard, but your head coach just got fired. I thought, oh, my gosh. What am I going to do now? And I kind of went in a cave for a moment. I went outside in the hall, and I called our athletic director, and, and I said, can you tell me what's going on? He said, well, we're pulling everybody off the road. Y'all come back to campus, no need. I was supposed to get on a plane and fly to Arizona to recruit. He said, just drive back to campus. We're pulling everybody off the road. Man, about the first hour driving back, I, sold, I was sold up. Didn't understand. Why in the world are we, is this, are we going through this? Felt like I was in a cave. And then about that next hour, I kind of shifted gears and I said, God, you've been faithful to me before because I've been through this when my head coach was fired at Ole Miss too. And, and I, I've been through this before. You were faithful then. You'll be faithful now, just like the song was saying. And you know what? I'm going to flip the switch and I am going to, even though I got conflict, even though I got hurt, I'm headed back to Jonesboro, Arkansas. And the first thing I'm going to do is go after that job and try to get it. I called that AD and I said, I want to meet with you tonight. And I met with him and I presented him a plan. The next day they hired me as the head coach because of God's faithfulness. But also because of a mindset like these warriors had in the cave of Adullam. You know what, David, if you need water, I'll break through the enemy lines for you to do it because I'm all in. So are we really built different here at Liberty? Are we really all in when society is trying to dictate and culture is trying to dictate how we should think? react are we really all in with the faith that we say we possess and the faithfulness of a God that has never failed 
There'll, 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 there'll always be some conflict to your story. We have some on-the-spot moments, whether good or bad. I'll tell you one more story. I'm at Lambeth University. I sign up. It's no money, no facilities, no anything, but just an opportunity. And I get a bunch of guys to come join me at Lambeth University, and we start winning some games. About halfway through the first season, we stop getting paid. The university is going under. So what is my mentality as a man who has a, uh, has a wife and kids? I got to go find another job, right? Correct? Isn't that the mindset? I'm going to go find another job. And so I, I went after this job as soon as the season was over. I got offered the job in, 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 in another place in the state. And I called my wife and I said, hey, I got offered the job. We're going to take this job and we're going to move. And she says, well, wait, we haven't prayed about it. I said, pray about it? What do we have to pray about? We're not getting paid. I mean, there ain't nothing to pray about. We, oh, oh, and she just was dogmatic, and I really didn't want to hear it. And she said, no, we said we were going to always pray about these decisions. I said, baby, there is nothing to pray about. We're not getting paid. She said, well, you brought uh, about 15 other families here, and if you leave to take this job, you cannot take them with you, correct? And I said, correct. I can't. I'm going to be an OC. You don't get to take everybody with you. You only do that when you're a head coach. And she said, well, I think we need to pray about it. And, man, I was sold up, didn't want to talk to her the rest of the ride home. But I called him. I said, can you give me the Saturday? I was doing a, a Bible plan then called Divine Mentor. And I never knew what I was going to turn my Bible to on those given days. But every day I'm riding into work, my practice was, God, this is what's on my mind, and I need an answer from you. And I'm the type that really doesn't, I don't ever feel tremendous peace about decisions that involve hurt to people. But if I get a word from God that I know is from him, I will walk in faith in it. And, and, but I really need a word, man. I'd go through the week, and I'm, I'm getting nothing. I'm on the way to work again. God, I really need an answer from you. I really want to take this job, but I don't want to do it in flesh. I want, I want, I want to know your word. Man, I'm, I'm clicking on that divine mentor. Come on, come on, give me the word. Nothing. The day before I have to give them the answer, God is my witness. I click on divine mentor. And it goes to Colossians. And it says, do not merely look out for your own interest, but for the interest of others. I said, man, that's not what I wanted to hear. I wanted the green light. I wanted to go get a paycheck. I called him and turned the job down, immediately went to my staff. Then I said, guys, I want to tell you all something. You need to be looking for a job because this time next year, I'm out. You, you better start finding the job because I want you taken care of and you have my blessing to go do it. But I'm going to hang in here somehow. Three months later, God brings into our lives two men, Dan Crockett, Steve Brooks. They write a check for a million dollars to fund all the back pay of the salaries, fund the next football season for us. Man, we won 12 games, went to the final four in the nation in NAIA. And to this day, to this day, those two men are still largely responsible for what we are doing now in our, with four others, with Chris Tomlin's Angel Armies. And those men basically fund with Jill and I all of our help for orphan care and foster care, and we have kept over 3,000 kids out of the foster care system in our three years here. Now, I don't say that for any applause for, for our team, or, but I'm saying to you, because when the conflict came, we chose to trust in God and seek him for the answer, he did something that I could not even imagine, and he has given us a story to tell and he'll do the same for you so we've had a lot of on this spot moments that Lambeth one is one for me I'll tell you another one for me is the cow pastures of Independence Mississippi where I had to get up every morning 4 30 and go get those cows to go milk them I say that to tell you this I hated it and I knew from on that spot and I can go back in my mind to those spots I knew I wasn't milking cows for a living 
That's where God called me into coaching because I knew I had no way in the world I'm getting up and chasing those cows. So what about you? What about some on-the-spot moments for you? What is a spot that, man, when you think of this spot, man, that is an on-the-spot moment. It can be bad. It can be good. It can be something of God's faithfulness or it can be something you learned about yourself. Give me an on-the-spot moment. Give me an on-the-spot moment, Logan. Some guys working in construction. Why? Miserable. You knew you wanted to coach then. That's when you came begging me to hire you, right? Yes, sir. Somebody else, an on-the-spot moment. There's got to be a spot, man. On the spot. This? Well, thank you. That's good. I hope that's a good thing. I hope it's not a bad thing. Who else has got an on-the-spot moment? Charles, I know you got one. Where'd you engage? COVID free. That's an on the spot. He had a 30 day battle with it. I mean, that was tough, and we worried about Charles for a while. On the spot moment. Anybody over here? Coming to Liberty. Applying to Liberty. That, hey, everybody, applaud that. Man, that is a, that's God at work for you. There you go. Thank you, band. We have a great band. That must be the band. So I want you to think of these on-the-spot moments. And some of you have some difficult ones too, no doubt, and we could go through those. I've had my share. I tell our team all the time, I'm not afraid to get in the ditch with you. I just am afraid of people that want to stay in the ditch. I'll get, out, I'll get in the ditch with you, but we're going to come out. We got to come out the other side. And I want to tell you, the cave of Adullam is not where David wanted to be. It's not where the 37 mighty men wanted to be. But it was where they needed to be to realize, man, this is not about us. And it's not about me. It's always about Jesus. And it's there where David and those men learned a lot of great, great lessons. So don't be afraid of the conflict when it comes. He was faithful before he'll be faithful again and lastly I'd say to you man consider the long game this if you haven't heard anything I've said before to, to, to I get to this please hear me consider the long game there's a verse uh, in 2 Samuel 23 that kind of starts winding it up that says there were 37 in all how many do you think are in here right now you know, 8,000, 10,000, is that what it seats? I, I can't. This is what I told our team before our bowl game is, man, there, there were 110 of us. There were 37 of them. Are we considering the long game, really? Are we making decisions today that we're still happy with a year down the road, three months down the road? Are we considering the long game? Let me tell you a few stories. On December the 31st, 1759, Arthur Guinness leased a four-acre property at St. James Gate in Dublin, Ireland. He foresaw that Ireland would build its Grand Canal adjacent to that gate, and it would give his brewery a built-in shipping lane to its backyard. He secured a 9,000-year lease. I have no idea why it was nine and not eight or ten, but one thing's for sure. He was in it for the long haul. His motto was consider the long game and act quickly. So before joining David's ranks, I'm quite sure the mighty men undoubtedly did some scenario analysis. Joining David Band of Brothers was a dangerous decision. I'm sure they thought long and hard, but once a decision was made, they acted quickly and went all in. One of the biggest mistakes we make in thinking of terms of one generation, it's not only short-sighted, it's selfish. Before the Battle of Long Island, General George Washington reminded his troops, the fate of the unborn millions will now depend upon God and on the courage and fight of this army. Abraham Lincoln, 150 years later, 13th Amendment was passed through Congress. The, abol uh, the abolition of slavery was sell the fate of for all time 
and only the millions now in bondage, but to unborn millions to come. Washington and Lincoln had their eyes on the third and fourth generations as who they're fighting for. Their dream wasn't about them. Just like them, David's mighty men were fighting for the next generation of Jews. I can hear David's inspiring his men. We have therefore to resolve to conquer or die. They pledged their lives, their future, their honor to the cause. What about liberty? What are we pledging our life to? What is our long game? Are we considering our decisions that we make? Do we truly handle things differently than the world? Are we truly built different than the world? Man, in closing, I can only imagine, I can only imagine each of David's mighty men as old, old men telling their stories. You know how we're going to sit around, J.J., when we're old and tell stories? You know how we're going to sit around and I'm going to try to one-up you, you know? You remember that day we were warriors for David in the cave and I went out there and I killed 500 with my sword and you're like, no, 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 coach. I, I killed 600, though, with my sword that day. We're going to sit around and we're going to tell all of those stories. Guess what? You're going to sit around and tell those stories of the football season. They're going to sit around and tell. Man, y'all remember that practice when Coach Freeze went nuts on us? Y'all remember that time where we were down by 14 and we were able to come back and win it? You're going to tell those stories of the people that you met at Liberty University in your hallways or in your dorms. And you're going to tell the, the, the stories of Convo. And you're going to tell the stories of what Jesus did in your life. And you're going to tell the stories. We're going to sit around and we're going to have some scars because we're going to be in some caves in life. You know, I can imagine um, I, I'm sure that their bodies were bruised and battered and they're a shell of their former self. I'm sure Josheb man, he had bursitis in his shoulder for holding those, the, that, that sword up so long. Eleazar had arthritis in his wrist. Benaiah had a slip disc or two from running down into the caves to kill that lion. But they're sitting around and they're telling these stories. Their fighting days are over and they have considered the long game because the long game delivered the Jews. And, it, and by the way, you know where it ended up? David in the palace as the king. Now, what will our story tell from the time that we're together at Liberty? I have coaches that leave every year and they go off to other staffs and we have players that graduate and go in either the workforce or something and you have graduation, you're going into the workforce. And I, what is the story that they will tell? What's the story you'll tell from your days here? Are we considering the long game or are you just, man, what's today bring? Let me just get through today. Let me just make a decision today and let me just get by and get through. No, God created us to chase some lines. And he puts you here and equips you with people all around you that will help you do that. So be some line chasers. I ask you when we started today, what day when measured would be one of the greatest days of your life outside of accepting Christ? I've had a bunch of those days, man. Some of them are these victories with these guys at Virginia Tech. The field goal goes through to win it. Three bowl games. The Mardi Gras parade at the last one where our band came through. Man, that was like, a, I just love that. Our cheerleaders came through. I was fired up, man. That was a great day. Here recently, man, I had another one that just whoo, stands out as, man, when measured against all others, it's pretty freaking awesome. It was my daughter getting married. Listen, I hated every minute of it up until when it happened. I was a mess. I was a mess. How do you give over something that, 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 that you feel like, man, oh, God, I just, I have to protect her. I have to do this, and you have to trust God with is how you do it. But she asked me to speak at it, and, man, I was a wreck. I was writing all the notes that morning just boo-hooing. No way I'm going to get through this. And I begged her, don't make me do it. She said, Dad, you're good at talking. And I said, I'm good at talking to a football team. I, I'm not, this is a whole different animal. Many of you know Jordan, and I tell you, so I got up that morning, and I finally just said, Hugh, you got to get a hold of yourself. I talk to myself sometimes, and, and I said, I'm going to treat it like game day. And so I flipped that switch, and I got all my notes ready, and the first thing I had to do was the, the first look with my daughter, my first one to get married, and man, I was just getting myself ready. I was sitting in the back pew of the church. They were going to knock on the door, and I was going to walk out and see her on the front porch. And man, they knocked on that door, and I said, all right, get yourself together. And I went out, and I said, oh, baby, it's game day. And she said, it's game day, Dad. I'm excited. I said, I'm so glad you're excited. And I like the guy, so that makes it doable. But uh, I, I'm, I'm, 
I, I went and held her hand. I teared up a little bit telling her how beautiful she was. I did. But I, was, I wasn't bad. I wasn't out of control, you know. I was still doing pretty good until she says to me, Dad, I want to give something back to you. And she gave me her purity ring that I gave her when she was 14. And she said, I want you to know I honored you. I lost it. I lost it. And then I rejoiced that, man, she considered the long game. Because the long game is how many decisions can we make that don't bring regrets? How many decisions can we make that bring honor to each other and to God? That is the long game. And I'm here to tell you, some of you have made decisions that you regret. I've been there. It's okay. God is still faithful even when we're faithless. It, what matters, though, is from this moment on, how do we finish? Stats tell us that 0 to 19 is the first quarter of your life. 20 to 37 is the second quarter of your life. 38 to 56 is the third quarter of your life. 57 to 75 is the fourth quarter of your life. And I thank God that some of us have overtime. But you're only in like the first or second quarter of your life. And I, if I could just challenge you with anything, anything for you to take from this deal is, man, make decisions that in a year from now, you are still happy with. Consider the long game. Consider the long game while you're in your youth that when you get to my age, you're like, man, I did it right. Man, I love those people that are on my hallway. Man, I treated them with respect. Man, I honored God with those decisions. May you finish well. Some of you, man, you don't beat yourself up anymore. It's time to let it go. Accept the forgiveness of a heavenly father that loves you and play the next play and then play the next play. But may you finish with the long game in mind that brings honor to God and may we prove, truly prove that we're built different here because of his faithfulness to us. And God, that is our prayer today that we would finish well for you and your great name.
morning and tonight come back for campus community Josh Rutledge is going to be speaking tonight on Friday Pastor Noe Garcia from North Phoenix Baptist Church will be speaking for us in Convo next Wednesday Sarah Huckabee Sanders will be speaking and next Friday will be our own president Jerry Prevo will be speaking in Convo so we got a great lineup for the next couple of weeks God bless you guys we'll see you back tonight for campus community